What's going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD. And if you're watching this video, you're probably going in after your CB750 Nighthawk carburetors. It's been sitting up for a while. Uh, Lord knows how long. Maybe it runs like crap. Maybe you let it sit over the winter time. Sat for 10 years. Who knows? Typically, if you're experiencing any type of runnability issue with the inline four Nighthawks or really any bike that has a great motor, a great charging system, a great ignition system, but they have carburetors, it's probably the problem if it's been sitting at all. So, specifically, the Nighthawk 750 carbs are an inline four set of carbs. If you haven't already, I have a video on how to remove them, okay? I'll probably put a card up here for you so you can check back and learn how the heck do I take them out. Another video that will be coming soon, if it's not already, how to install them. But, the main thing that you need to know how to do is how to clean these things. Even if you've cleaned 100 carburetors in your life, from Harleys to whatever, an inline four set to be split, completely torn down, can be a little bit intimidating, okay? So in this video, we'll be talking about cleaning them. Three or four different things that I know you'll miss if this is brand new to you, and I wanna make sure you have that information, but we're gonna go over the top three, maybe four things that you'll miss going through these bad boys, because you wanna take a carburetor set that looks like that, and make it look something more worth looking at, okay? Something that runs and you can rely on and get your home. Now, the tips and tricks that I'll be showing you with these carburetors come directly from the carb clean video that I have available. This is exactly how I would clean your carbs if they were in my lap, if you brought it to the shop, whatever. Okay, I'm not skimping you out on anything, all right? So, stick around, gain some confidence, and learn how to clean these bad boys. Now, the first item up on the chopping block is your fuel valve. Okay, the CB750 Nighthawks or any of the really inline four style bikes, again, these can relate to the 750s, uh, the 80 style 750, the 80s style 650s, um, any of the inline fours that look anything like these CB carbs you are prepared to tear into, all of this information applies to them. Okay, fundamental stuff here, guys. If the bike's been sitting for a long period of time, okay, the gas is bad more than six months and needs to come out of there, okay? Especially if, the, if you just bought the bike and it's been sitting for a long period of time, whatever. Get the gas out by whatever means possible, okay? On these bikes, they have a vacuum-operated fuel valve, okay? Little vacuum hose right here that comes off of the number two cylinder. Small little hose attaches right to the bottom of the fuel tank, okay? When you start the bike up, this sucks vacuum onto the back of this valve. There's a diaphragm that floats and functions. I have another video on how to diagnose if yours is bad or not. More likely than not, this vacuum operated fuel valve needs to be cleaned or replaced or at least checked. You can rebuild these, okay? If it's, too de if it's way too deteriorated and oxidated and all this jazz, then you may need a whole new valve, which can be expensive. I believe many people buy them off of Amazon and they're like, ah, oh, it's 20 bucks, but Honda's is like 160 or something. Uh, I don't think I need to really tell you how long uh, which one will last or how many you'll go through. Even if you have to buy four to meet the price of one Honda, you can do whatever you want. But I would get the vacuum operated system if you can. If you're going to the carbs and you know it's been sitting for a while, just replace this vacuum operated fuel valve on the back, okay? Diaphragm spring plate is a kit that you can buy. I'll put a, a link in the description below. That's our first assessment. Okay, make sure that this is working properly because if this does not work, if this sucks vacuum, if this sucks fuel, however they can fail, it will throw your fix off completely because it just will not run right. And while you're there, make sure that you go ahead and replace this vacuum hose. Okay, uh, it may look good, but if you kind of pinch it real tight and it's nice and stiff and hard, it's gone way too long without being replaced. And most of the time they will develop like spider-like cracks on the tips of them. Sometimes you can get away with just cutting it off just replace it, little hose, and mark it off the list of things to do. Now the second thing that's not up for debate is if you've never been through these carbs or the previous owner has never been through them or whatever, you just picked the bike up, you bought it, or whatever the case may be, if you've never been through these things, highly suggest that you go through the full split, okay? Each tube that goes in between the carb, from this carb to that carb to that carb to that carb, they have fuel tubes because when you put in fuel into one inlet, which is right here in the center, it has to flow fuel into all of the carbs evenly without leaking, which is the one thing that people skimp on. They'll take these all apart, 
put them in a hot bath, put them back together, and then they leak and piss fuel all over the place, okay? If you're gonna go through this process, all the chokes need to be removed, all of the bracketry, all of the fuel tubes need to re be replaced with brand new O-rings, okay? It's a must. There's no point in going through the trouble of pulling these out and back in without doing this job. Do it right the first time, you will not be pulling them out four or five times later, okay? So, make sure you replace all the fuel lines, which means that yes, you are splitting each carb off of each other. Next! All right, guys, so this next section, uh, two of them will come from straight from the full teardown. I think it's like a two-hour video of this full, complete teardown. Um, I think it's just vital for any carb that you ever touch. Just fundamental information on how the carb is just made and what you need to really be looking for when you're not, it's not just replacing the jets and then calling it done. It's really getting into the tunnels for each individual port. And I feel like this video explains it best. Again, it's just straight from the full teardown video that I ha that I offer you guys in the description below. If you're not, if you're not aware of how it, the system works with all the tunnels, and you would, I don't want you to spray contact cleaner in your eyes, okay? So it's crucial that during this section, I would also wear some gloves. And if you want, you can kind of hit it and watch where does it come out, you know? This is the choke plunger, so that should come out somewhere here. Or if I spray down in here, it should come out somewhere here. Because if you look at the way the carb works, visually inspect it, you can see you got all these little tunnels. Right here, the tunnel there, another one on this side that runs down there, one that should come straight out from here. And just think about it logically, all right? So, you have these tunnels that, if you have a drill, you can only drill in straight lines, all right? So in order for them to connect all these tunnels, they have to drill straight, plug it up with a brass ball, and then drill in that way, so then they can kind of meet, all right? So if you notice, you'll see these little brass balls all over the carb, right there up front, it's because that's how they can mate and get the tunnel to flow. So if you look at this one, you can see that the, the idle circuit is directly affected by what? The idle mixture screw, because the tunnel runs from there, straight forward, there's the little cover dot right there where they patched it, and then it directly accesses the mixture screw. Same with the choke. See how this line, this tunnel runs down, comes out here, where they patched it, and guess what? The choke plunger would sit right inside of there. And then look, you have another one that runs straight down and into there. What do you know? There's a hole. See how that's how you can you can inspect and see, okay, if I spray here, then that means it should come out. Oh, here. Because that's the only opening for it. Or if I spray, you know, so on and so forth. That's how you know the carburetor is clean. That right there is the tip of all tips. Alright, hope you guys are hanging in there. Okay, the next vital step. Hot tip of the video will be how I clean and hand polish every individual brass part in that carb. It's all important. Nothing is not important. Specifically, we'll be moving into the emulsion tube, which is a very crucial part for where main fuel and air atomizes together inside this specific tube before it enters into the engine. And it's got to be perfect. And the better you make it, the better it will run. And I show you how I do that here. Alright, so now we can move on to the emulsion tubes here. That's where the main jet sits in. Same thing. This one will be a little bit different, but for the exter exterior, it's exactly the same. Alright, so now that the exteriors are clean, what I'll do is I'll grab some new steel wool. I'll grab a slice off of it. This is a triple lot steel wool, by the way. I'll take a nice strand like this and really twist it up, make it small. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna polish the inside of this jet. All right, if I looked really closely, it's not a mirror finish like I'd like it to be. So that's what I'll do on the inside. I'll just run this, it's thick enough to run it straight down in and kind of twist as you go in and kind of force that steel wool inside. And that hones the inside of this, which allows it to work so much better. 
Is it with some air or contact cleaner? And that looks so much better. So that's done right there. All right, so that's it, guys. Hope those tips help you out. Again, you can reference this to any of the inline fours from Honda or really any bike. Um, the fundamentals on how to clean these out properly the first time, the tools you need, that's those small little things are what separates you from someone's bike that does not run very well. Okay, when you want it to run perfect, if not better than it did when it came out of the box, which you can do. So again, as you probably saw, I had this entire video set out, laid out, step by step, parts, tools, everything that you need labeled, available for you to pick up, okay? No gimmicks, it's there for you when you need it, if you need it. I know this can be very overwhelming when you have all these parts separated. Having some kind of source to go back to, relook at how things went together, how they came apart, it's more helpful than you'd ever know, okay? That link for that video is in the description below. Be sure to check it out so you get these right the first time. That's the goal. Pro clean on the first take. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys some quality tips and some tricks for your next build or your daily rider. Get it running right. Later.